there's a lot of new players uh, from a relatively young region. I feel like this is something that uh, we have to talk about, Jenkins, because the South American region is showing up big this year. Yeah, this is uh, the first year in TI history where uh, China is not number one in terms of uh, players at this at this TI. Uh, in fact, they usually double or triple uh, the next mm -hmm. country. TI3 uh, was Malaysia. But now, uh, uh, Peru has the most players at this entire TI. And not only that, Beast Coast is the most experienced five-man roster in terms of TIs. This is their third TI with this roster. Uh, LGD, in terms of games played with the roster, has a little bit more than Beast Coast, but both LGD and Beast Coast are top 10. And I feel like if we were to... This would be just unprecedented, like three or four years ago, that mm -hmm. a South American team we're talking about. It's like, this is the most experienced team. We also have the Dark Horse from South America. We also have Thunder Awaken, which is upper bracket. Like, this region goes deep now. This is a, this is a solid, solid region. It's not the Forgotten Lands anymore. And that is a true dark horse in Hikori, but also Thunder Awaken, even though they had an excellent year and nobody looks down at them, they are contenders and they have shown that they can go toe to toe with even the greatest teams. So for the first time ever, it's not one, but three South American teams playing on the main stage of the international. And that really just goes to show how investing in a region does yield results. Yep, and we just saw already that the best result that a South American team ever has had is top eight. It was, of course, the uh, the former infamous now Beast Coast at uh, TI9. It was a little bit ago, but there's definitely a lot of potential with uh, the current squads. Yes, we know one will be eliminated in round one, but then there's still two remaining. So we'll see how well they'll do here for this week and a half.